Hello, I'm Bruce DePoy. Coming up today on News Talk. Frustrated with the surge in gun violence, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe signs an executive order dealing with firearms. What impact will it have? And are there other measures that the states and Congress should consider as America tries to get a handle on its gun violence problem? We'll ask two members of the Virginia General Assembly. Also for you this time, the Washington Nationals search for a new manager. Some familiar names are surfacing as the team's process ramps up. We'll get the latest from Washington Post reporter James Wagner. From News Channel 8, this is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. We've had a great week of shows, and we have a great one for you on tap today. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks very much for your time this time. Governor Terry McAuliffe this week signed an executive order that he hopes will reduce gun violence in the Commonwealth. The measure outlaws the carrying of guns in some state-owned buildings. It sets up a task force to bolster the prosecution of gun crimes. It establishes a statewide tip line to report gun crimes, and it orders state police to request a trace of every gun involved in a crime in Virginia. Joining us now, two members of the Virginia Senate. Democrat Adam Eben is with us here in the studio. He's a Democrat, as I say. Republican Dick Black is with us by phone from his district office in Loudoun. Senator Black, thanks for being there. Senator uh, Eben, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. What's your reaction to the move the governor took this week, he was surrounded by the Attorney General, uh, Senator Kane, and others who very much applauded his actions. What's your take? These are common sense actions that will save lives and help us uh, do a better job in, of enforcing existing uh, laws. Why? Because uh, it will stop uh, more prohibited people from having guns. It will better uh, catch people who have guns. We'll be able to trace guns that are committed in crimes, perhaps helping law enforcement uh, that way. Are these actions he can take without the assembly? They are. Uh, he has the uh, jurisdiction to uh, uh, order the state police to take certain actions. As the chief executive, he can prohibit guns in uh, most state buildings. Senator Black, what's your reaction to the governor's moves of this week on guns, on firearms? Well, I think uh, probably the biggest thing he's doing is he's creating new gun-free zones. If you look at the history of these uh, mass shootings in America, they almost universally occur in gun-free zones. Uh, and what he's doing by uh, prohibiting uh, firearms in, uh, in state-owned buildings is he's creating gun-free zones that will simply encourage additional violence. Are there steps you'd like to see him take? But let yes. me back up. Let me back up. Forgive me, uh, Senator Black. Is there, are there other aspects of this that uh, you're willing to uh, comment on or that you have thoughts uh, about? it? Because we put four of them on the screen, and, and I read, the, I, I just went through them um, in the setup. Uh, other comments on other aspects of what he's doing? Well, a lot of it is, is kind of fluff. I mean, the idea of having a, uh, a tip line to call in gun crimes. I mean, we've, we've got a 9-11 uh, system that's used all the time. Uh, when criminals uh, use guns or any kind of violence. So a lot of it is just uh, political fluff. Uh, probably the, the one thing of substance uh, is, the, uh, is the creation of the gun-free zones uh, in state buildings. Uh, and, and how does that cut with you? Well, I think, I think it's a very bad thing. If you, if you look at the places uh, where, these, uh, where these mass incidents occur, Typically, they're on college campuses, they're in public schools, they're in uh, uh, post offices. Uh, in, in some states that prohibited firearms in, uh, in restaurants, they occurred in restaurants, uh, places like that. Wherever you create a gun-free zone, <clears throat> basically you disarm all law-abiding people. Now, criminals, could, they, they could care less about uh, about gun laws. If you're prepared to go out and you're prepared to, to murder 20 or 30 people, you're not particularly going to con be concerned about whether your record also, in addition to 30 first degree murders, includes uh, a, uh, a firearms violation. Uh, Senator Black, stand by. Senator Eben. It's interesting. We're seeing in Israel right now a situation where folks are getting stabbed all over the place, and oftentimes it is an armed civilian who takes down the assailant because they're closer to the violence than police. It takes, you know, police can't be everywhere, and it takes them time to respond. 
part, that, that's one of the thoughts I have as I listen to Senator Black, sure. is that when you say that people can't have guns, you're disarming the, the, the folks with good intentions who would have a weapon for defensive purposes, protective purposes only, while the criminals who have already indicated they're willing to uh, do whatever, regardless of the laws on the books, uh, keep on keeping on. Well, that's not true. Uh, we are not disarming people who uh, are entitled to have a gun, but what we are doing is stopping uh, the 16,000 people who since 1989 have been caught in the Virginia background check as someone who shouldn't have a gun. So uh, it's, I would contend that it's a lot easier to uh, shoot someone uh, than it is to stab someone and that that's not really the issue. I think that's a diversion. And when Senator Black talks about gun-free zones, I think that the 60,000 Virginians who work in government buildings are entitled to be safer, and uh, that's why we have security guards, that's why we have police. Uh, and, and that's just not what the issue is. Uh, his colleagues won't even support uh, universal background checks. Uh, your reaction to his characterization of this as fluff, political fluff? No, I think it's great that the governor is moving ahead with actions when the General Assembly has uh, repeatedly stymied uh, common sense legislation. This is not the Wild West. Governor, uh, Governor, I've, I've promoted you. Senator Black, do you think America has a gun violence uh, problem now? And if so, uh, what would a Governor Black, what would a President Black uh, suggest or recommend or, or, or push? Yeah, I, I think there are I think there are a couple of things that truly are common sense. I, I know that's become the the Democrats' watchword, but uh, there's not much common sense. Uh, frankly, uh, a bullet can fly much more quickly than a uh, than a police uh, squad car that's uh, half a mile away. So uh, you you don't have time to call on somebody else in an emergency situation. There there are two specific things. One is uh, I think we need to uh, to relook our our practices on mental health. Uh, we need to institutionalize dangerously insane people. Uh, we went through a period where uh, there was a uh, great movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that actually caused sort of a a, a, a cultural change where we. We began to think, well, gosh, all of these people, they ought to just be released and, and that type of thing. And some of them should have. But on the other hand, um, you have people who are dangerous and they need to be institutionalized. And I think we need to, to move in that direction. The other thing is that I think we need to, uh, we need to end the Democrats' war on cops. Uh, the Democrats have been... Uh, hammering on police every little thing that uh, that happens uh, they're after the police and and it is it is beginning to make the police uh, very cautious about uh, about dealing with crime but you sw I, I do want to jump in there when you say every little thing um, some of the videos that we've seen that have aroused major uh, public anger, and not just in the African, not just in the African American community, but across our society. Um, I suspect there are people listening who would not put those actions. And you know, a video—it's—it's it's not everything that happened. But sometimes you people feel like they can draw a pretty solid conclusion based on what is, what does make it to the tape, what does, what images do get captured, to say every little thing. Um, do you do you stand by those words? Well, to uh, uh, it, it depends on how how things are framed. You take the case in Ferguson, Missouri, where you had a a 300-pound fellow who had just committed a strong-arm robbery, and in the course of uh, of a confrontation with a police officer, uh, reached into the car, smashed the uh, the officer, broke his cheekbone, seized his gun, tried to kill him with the gun. And he was portrayed as being uh, an unarmed teenager. Uh, that was, uh, that was, I think, a, a mischaracterization. You look at what's happened in Ferguson, Missouri, since then. Property values have plummeted. There's not ever going to be a business that's going to reestablish itself there. And in the entire St. Louis area, of course, Ferguson is a suburb of, of St. Louis, 
uh, the number of, of murders has skyrocketed. Let me get, I mean, it's just become a lawless uh, city. Because of the time, uh, Senator Black, let me get Senator Evan in, and sure. I'll just observe that I've never been to Ferguson, but I've seen stories on network newscasts about businesses that were damaged uh, in the disturbance that have uh, reopened. But sure. Uh, the, good, we don't, the broader point. Well, first off, we don't have a war on police. And, um, if there's a problem, make that characterization. That's ridiculous. If you talk to the state police about wanting to be safe from certain kinds of bullets, wanting uh, state police have testified in Richmond and local police about having people who shouldn't have guns, uh, keeping them out of them. And when Senator Black talks about gun-free zones being where these events are and mass murders, uh, it's important to know that in Virginia. The vast majority of intimate partner, partner homicides were committed with a firearm. And in Virginia law right now, uh, an abuser can have a gun after they're convicted if they already own it. But if they, they're prohibited from buying a new gun. But we don't seem to get any traction for closing those loopholes in Richmond. Um, further, we don't even require in Virginia that when a gun is stolen from a private citizen that they report it to help recover the gun. Uh, this is not about... Uh, gun-free zones. This is about saving lives, and it's about the corporate gun lobby. And I'm sorry that Senator Black has bought into the corporate gun lobby. Sportsmen and responsible gun owners support reasonable measures. A, a moment ago, he outlined a couple steps he thinks we should take as a society. Your last answer, I think, includes, correct me if I'm wrong, some of the things that uh, you would love to see the Virginia Assembly pursue. That's right. Uh, you know, I've put in legislation that intoxicated people couldn't have guns, defeated by Mr. Black's colleagues. I've put in legislation that children under uh, five could not be allowed to handle a gun, defeated by Mr. Black's colleagues. Uh, this, unfortunately, is the Republican corporate gun uh, lobby agenda, is to stop anything that makes common sense. When we know that NRA members support reasonable uh, measures, to stop the wrong people. We so you, you think the NRA is out of step with, with the, the, Certainly. the Second Amendment community? Sure, people. they don't represent the gun owners. Uh, you know, we say that guns kill people, so all we're saying is let's keep the wrong people, people who are prohibited from having guns, to have them. Senator Black will give you the last word. Well, I, you know, I agree that there are certain people who should not have guns, uh, felons, uh, those who are mentally ill. But I, I, the final word I would have is that uh, Virginia is a very safe uh, state. If you look at places with stringent uh, gun limitations, uh, Washington, D.C., Chicago, uh, Baltimore, those are places that are good examples. There are sky-high murder rates. And so I would much prefer the, the culture in Virginia where people can defend themselves from armed criminals. Senator Dick Black, Senator Abin Eben, thank you both for your time. Uh, an important topic to be sure. I uh, appreciate both of you being here. Uh, thanks very much for uh, being part of our discussion today. Thanks for having us. Okay, we'll thank you. We'll see you guys next time. We'll take a break here. Much more news talk coming your way after this.